Welcome back everybody, it's Caleb. Today we got a very special episode because we're gonna be talking about my end of year tech reading list. You can see I got a computer in the background with some code, make me look extra smart and I got a second monitor. It's not, uh, it's not doing anything, but it's there. I do apologize though, because I, I did just get off of a sickness, so if I sound a little blecky, uh, it felt like I had Ebola, but I'm pretty sure it just had like a man cold or something. So anyways, this video, we're going to be talking about what I'm going to be reading in the next couple of months and why. But before we get started, I wanted to give a special shout out. <laughs> I would like to give a special shout out and thank you to our sponsors. Dot tech domains. So if you're looking to build your own website to start a portfolio or maybe start teaching coding, I would definitely consider a dot tech domain. Maybe you've been in a situation where you're trying to set up a domain and you're like, oh, calebcurry.com. Oh, taken. Caleb Curry, the YouTuber.com. No, oh, taken. This isn't going to happen with dot tech domains because they're still new. They came out in 2015. So all the good names are still out there. And a lot of popular companies are snatching them up, including CES, Consumer Electronics Show, and Intel. Yeah, so definitely wanna go get those. Now, obviously I already have calebcurry.com, but if I were to create another technology-oriented website, I would legitimately consider a .tech domain because it tells people exactly what the website's about before they even visit the website. Now I'm gonna move on to my reading list, but if you guys are interested in registering a domain, check out the link in the description or go to tech.calebcurry.com. They have an upcoming sale for Black Friday where you can get 95% off of your domain. And if you pre-register for the sale, you can get even more savings. So now is the time if you've wanted to build a website, go register that domain. Oh, I'm just gonna put a crap ton of books on here. Oh shoot, oh shoot, okay. We good, we good. All right, you're probably wondering like what the crap? Am I actually gonna read all of these by the end of the year? The answer up front, to be honest, is no. <laughs> I have no intention of reading all of these front to cover, front to back <laughs> by the end of the year. You don't really have to read a book from beginning to end to get value from it, even though society tells you you need to do that. But when I read a book, I will skip things I don't find valuable and that allows me to get the most value for the least amount of time. And honestly, these all have a particular purpose. I have some specific series that are coming out and these are actually happening. Uh, these aren't ideas because I'm currently in the works of planning them. I got some sponsorship deals that have to happen. So <laughs> one of those, C Sharp, I think. So planning that one, absolutely for sure we got JavaScript. Okay. so. I'm, I'm in the works of, of going through a JavaScript course, building, building a JavaScript course. And one of the books I wanted to get to go through the basics of JavaScript is a smarter way to learn JavaScript. All right, so this book is, I mean, it's okay. It, the, the main seller of this book is that every chapter has online exercises. So if you learn very hands-on, by the way, all the links for these are gonna be in the description. If you are a very hands-on learner, this book I would highly recommend. The thing with it is it is pretty basic. So if, if you're just, just starting out and you need to learn the absolute basics of JavaScript, this would be a perfect read for you. Very hands-on, very practical. Now I have developed in JavaScript for a while. I mean, obviously I'm like in my 20s, so I have tons of experience. Most of the material in this book I've already done and had experience with. So this was a super, super easy read. And as a result, I went and picked up this uh, Secrets of the JavaScript Ninja, which is much more on the level of what I need. So this talks about a lot of the more in-depth JavaScript stuff. So this is how you can understand the scoping, understand objects and inheritance and all that fun stuff. So hoisting and other JavaScript stuff, which if you guys are interested, in the JavaScript course I'm working on. I should be releasing some videos for that this month, so be on the lookout. Okay, so the next thing is C Sharp. I, I am planning a C Sharp course, and I, I am pretty sure that's the series I'm gonna be releasing this month as well, the start of it. So C Sharp, um, this in a nutshell book is super good. And really that's, that's what it is. It covers a ton of information, and it's uh, very practical. 
I like this book because it's it's not like over the top challenging, but it's also not like guys, this is a character. We can assign a character to a variable. A computer program does this. Like it's not it's not like hey, you've never programmed bef before, but it's also not like hey, you're a C sharp expert. And with that, I actually do have a book down here, Programming ASP.NET Core, which I'll just pull that out here. So ASP.NET is the, the C-sharp web development framework, and the, the core version um, is basically the newest version, which is cross-platform. So you can deploy a web app on Windows, Linux, or Mac, which is actually, that actually makes ASP.NET a lot more valuable and a lot more in demand. And it's just like a much more light, wet, lightweight version compared to the, the full .NET framework. I don't know if this book is any good. I haven't started reading it. Um, but I have some experience in ASP.NET and ASP.NET Core. So I don't think it's gonna be too hard. I would say of all the web development things, I'm, the most, I'm most familiar with ASP.NET. Hopefully in the next few months, I'll be more familiar with Node.js, but not PHP. <laughs> all right. So for those of you who don't know, Java and C Sharp are basically twins. C Sharp is basically a Java clone <laughs> with some variations. And honestly, I learned C Sharp first, but learning Java was literally like no different. Literally in class, I wrote my code in C Sharp and then I just Java-fied it, which is an official word just to, that means taking not Java code and converting it to Java code manually by hand. It's a real thing, don't look it up because you know, it's not a lot of people do it, but it worked for me. That's, that's how I got through all my <laughs> Java classes. So my intent is, hey, I'm gonna make a C-sharp course and then I'm gonna Java-ify it. <laughs> so I'm gonna basically make the same course for Java, converting all of the, the technical details to be accurate and correct with Java versus C-sharp. All right, so next on my bucket list is Python. Okay, so here's another A Smarter Way to Learn book. Um, so yeah, this is, I'm intending on doing the same thing with this, just sitting down with a pencil. And what I do is, if I find something that I'm not familiar with or a good point, I'll underline it or circle it. And then I'll put a little X in the top corner. So then when I go back and I wanna make videos on these topics or I want to use some of the code, I can literally just scan through the pages and anywhere I see an X, I know there's some useful information. And I go through and pull out all that information and basically get a condensed version of the book. Uh, also guys, if you like this light, uh, it's a new light I got to do a review on, so that video will hopefully be coming out here pretty soon. It's pretty awesome, as you guys can tell. <laughs> um, so this is what I'm gonna be using for all my reading, which is fully adjustable, and it's, it's really sweet. So if you guys, want to get one of these, I'll put a link in the description as well. Okay, so next, I'm gonna step up my game with Python and, and dive deep into object-oriented programming with Python. Like I said, I have a lot of familiarity with object-oriented programming in C-sharp and Java and some uh, C++, but I've never really done it much, if at all, in Python. I'm hoping to release a full Python course as well and also a C++ course, so literally I'm trying to cover the, all the major programming languages. Okay, so what's this about? C++ Primer Plus, which is kind of a funny name. <laughs> they should have called it Primer Plus Plus. That would have been cooler. Um, but yeah, this is just like another crash course of C++. And I, the differences between something like C Sharp and C++ is much, the, this, the, the differences is much larger, but I'm still thinking I could kind of templatize the series that I'm building because C++ is still gonna have data types. It's still gonna have control flow structures and loops and classes and methods. Now programming in C, I'm actually basically done reading this because as you guys know, I do a, I have a C programming course um, on YouTube here. And I actually just released what I call the C programming crash course. And what that is, hey, it takes all that information from my YouTube course, condenses it, adds a little bit more practical information like multi-file compilation, and then some stuff on memory management, pointers, and structs. Um, and that's something that I'm selling. <laughs> so if you guys wanna pay a bunch of money um, and help me out, 
check out check out my C program and crash course. You can find it on my website, and if I remember, I'll put a link in the description. But I have been using this book to basically reference for those course for that course and for my YouTube series. So that is my reading list. Let me know what you guys think. <laughs> Did you enjoy me just kind of doing a personal video, just talking about, hey, what am I reading? What's going on in my life? Leave me a comment in the comment section below, as well as checking out the sponsors, if the, the sponsor if you're interested in getting a .tech domain. And yeah, thank you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>